on today's video we're gonna put new wiring on a trailer and we're also gonna put new fixtures on a trailer Hey there outdoor YouTubers, it's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors and you know like I said earlier in today's video we're going to rewire a few trailers and we're also going to put new fixtures on a few trailers. Alright so we're having trailer light problems and the wiring looks to be in pretty poor condition. It's butt spliced in a lot of spots, it's taped up, it looks kind of worn out in a few spots. Um, our light fixtures are kind of old. Maybe we've been thinking about upgrading to the LED fixtures. Whatever the reasons are, if we're gonna go ahead and go to all the trouble of rewiring this trailer, unless we're a hundred percent sure that those fixtures are working correctly, let's go ahead and put new fixtures on it too. Alright, so we want to go out and we want to get brand new LED light fixtures for our trailer. And we also want to make sure we have enough of the correct wire to wire this trailer. In this video, I'm going to give examples from two different boat trailers that I had rewired and put new fixtures on. Both boat trailers had the standard 4-pin flat wiring harness. But the principles and the techniques that we're going to go over will apply to all sorts of trailers. Now, to help us make sure that we have enough of the correct wiring to rewire our trailer, we're probably going to want to draw out kind of a wiring map of our trailer. But before we draw out our wiring map or schematic, I want to talk about trailer frame grounding and trailer frame continuity. Because these two things might affect how we want to run our new wires. We may not want to or we may not be able to run the new wires the same way that the old wires were run. And let me explain that. Okay, on your typical four pin flat wiring harness, and this is the trailer side wiring harness, you have a green, a yellow, a brown, and a white. All right, the green is for your right side blinkers and brakes, the yellow is for your left side blinkers and brakes, the brown is for your running lights, and the white is the return path back for all of the other three circuits. Okay, so let's just say we turn our running lights on. All right, voltage comes down here through the brown wire, out to our fixture, through the fixture, and then it needs a path back to get to this white wire. Okay, that's the return path back, that's what completes the circuit, and that's what makes the circuit work. And it would be the same thing for the green, okay, if we had uh, our voltage running down the green, say for the right side brake, it goes down the green, goes to the light fixture, lights up the light fixture and then it needs that return path back to get back on this white wire. Here's another trailer side wiring harness okay with all the wire and one thing that's kind of interesting about this white wire and, and it came like this right out of the package is this white wire is only about three or four feet long where the rest of the wires the green, yellow and brown have all kinds of length to them to get back to all the different fixtures that they need to get to. So what's up with this white wire only being three or four feet long? Well generally this white wire will get grounded to the trailer frame pretty much right away, kind of near the coupler, near where this uh, wiring harness sits. And then each individual fixture will also get grounded to the frame Okay, so then when the voltage comes down, say that brown wire again, down the brown wire, out to the fixture, through the fixture, lights up the fixture, and then it takes that path to ground to the frame of the trailer, then the voltage runs down the frame of the trailer and comes back out on this white wire that's also grounded to the frame of the trailer. So essentially, and, and this is pretty typical for most trailers, they will use the trailer frame as a white wire or a conductor of electricity 
for the path back to all the other circuits, the green, the yellow, and the brown. Now that was just a basic overview of how the trailer light circuit works. If you've got any more questions on this, I did leave a link to a more in-depth video on this subject. Okay, it's down in the description below this video, so check that out if you got any more questions. Okay, so what is all this, you know, white wire grounded to the trailer frame and trailer frame continuity? What does all this stuff have to do with how we rewire our trailer? Why can't we just wire it up the same way that it was wired before? Well, sometimes as trailers age, they will actually lose their continuity of the full length of the trailer. Now, if you have a fully welded trailer, from front to back, if it's fully welded, this probably won't be a problem for you. But if you have a trailer that's bolted together in spots or clamped together in spots, those are actually problem areas where you might lose continuity through the length of the trailer. Another problem spot is on tilt bed trailers. You pull a pin and the trailer kind of tilts and uh, comes apart on a hinge. All right. Well, that hinge can be a problem for continuity or electricity to get through. Now, a lot of these problem areas weren't problem areas when the trailer was brand new, right? Some of these bolt together points, uh, brackets that were uh, clamped onto the trailer or the tilt bed trailer. A lot of those areas weren't problems when the trailer was new. But over time, right, a bolt on uh, part, it starts to flex and wear and the hole gets slopped out. The bolt gets a little bit worn, corrosion settles in, maybe the trailer's been painted several times, and now you can kind of compromise that continuity through those types of areas. And we're going to address several of these problem areas in the examples in this video. Now, I mentioned earlier that each light fixture needs to be grounded to the trailer frame too, because that's how the circuit gets completed. So, how do we do that? Okay. Well, this particular light fixture, right, we have our brown wire, that's our running lights. We have our green wire, okay, that's our brake and our blinkers. And this particular fixture does have a white wire. In fact, this white wire has this ring connector mounted right on it, you know, right from the factory. And this is to be used to electrically ground it to the trailer frame right where this fixture is mounted. Usually that's done by taking this ring connector, putting it right over the stud used to mount the fixture, tightening it down, and that usually will provide a good electrical ground connection to the trailer frame. But what about this fixture? This is the same side fixture, right? It's got the green, the brown, but there's no white on this one. Well, this particular fixture needs to be grounded through these studs. All right, when you mount this light fixture to the trailer frame, you've got to have a good electrical ground connection from these studs to the trailer frame, and that's how the circuit gets completed in a fixture like this one. It's the same thing with these side marker lights. Okay, we just got the one wire coming out. This one wire needs to be attached to a brown wire. All right, there is no white wire coming out of this. Okay, but when you mount this side marker light, this stud needs to have a good electrical ground connection from the stud to the frame of the trailer. Now this side marker light is just a little bit different, okay? It doesn't have a white wire either. It's just got the one brown wire, okay? But when you mount this fixture, you would screw it in through these side holes, it has this little electrical tab right here, okay? This little metal tab, and this metal tab needs to be electrically grounded to the trailer frame for the circuit in this one to be completed. And the rest of the wiring is pretty straightforward, okay? On this fixture, we've got our green and our brown, okay? And on this trailer side uh, wiring harness, we've also got our green and our brown, and we've got our yellow for the other side, okay? And you just want to match those ones up color for color, brown to brown, yellow to yellow, green to green. Okay, so these are all very important concepts to understand. Now we can go ahead and we can kind of draw out our wiring map or our wiring diagram for our particular trailer. Now, some of the kits that you can buy that come with the tail lights and the wiring harness all in one kit, all right, a lot of times they will have a little diagram that comes with them. But that diagram might not tell the whole story 
of your own particular trailer. Okay, so here's the map or schematic I drew for this first trailer that we're going to rewire and refixture. Right here is the trailer frame itself. All right, we've got the uh, right tail light, the left tail light, side marker light, side marker light. All right, and as far as the wiring goes, we need to get a brown wire, okay, on this right side. That's the running light wire. We need to get that to the side marker light, and we also need to get it over to this right tail light. And then on the right side, we also need this green wire. That's our blinker and our brake light. Okay, and then on the left side, we also need a brown wire, right? Because all four of these lights need to light up when we turn our running lights on. So we also need a brown wire over here that comes down, goes to the side marker light, continues on, and it goes to this left tail light. Then we also have the yellow, all right, the yellow, that's our brake and our blinkers for the left side, all right, and then our white wire. Now on this particular trailer, I'm going to run this white wire all the way back to this back section of the trailer frame. All right, and I'm going to explain why I did that in a few minutes here. And then I'm also going to have a short run of white wire that goes to the right and the left tail light to that same section of trailer frame. All right, and again, I'm going to explain that in just a minute. So at this point, we've got a pretty good idea of what color wire needs to go where. So we can go ahead and take some measurements and make sure that we have enough of each color to make the runs to get the wires where we need them to go. And then it's also a good idea to add another 20% onto these uh, measured lengths, okay? Just to make sure we don't run out of wire. Now, if you notice from that diagram, I showed a brown wire branching out and going to both sides of the trailer. And a lot of times when you buy these wiring harness kits, okay, they will actually come with two brown wires and that's what it's meant to do is to actually split and branch out and to go on each side of the trailer because we need that brown on both sides of the trailer. Or you can buy this trailer wiring in bulk, okay? It comes with all four colors and it's just kind of in a generic bulk and then you can kind of mix and match to what you need to do for your particular trailer. Now on this trailer I could ground that white wire right by the coupler, okay? But if you follow the trailer back, you can see this front section is actually bolted to this back section. It is not welded together. This could be a problem area for electricity to pass through, especially with an older painted trailer, okay? Like I said before, these bolted areas can flex and the holes can kind of slop out, corrosion sets in. And this older trailer has been painted over several times. So I just don't trust this bolted area to be able to be a good conductor of electricity and to be a good path back for all the other fixtures. When this trailer was new, it was probably perfectly fine for electricity to pass through this area. But at this stage in the game, I just don't trust it anymore. So I want to run the white wire all the way back to this back area of the trailer frame and get it past this bolted area. Here's another section of this trailer that I just don't trust. These side marker lights are mounted on these brackets and these brackets are just bolted to the trailer frame and they actually kind of wiggle back and forth. So I just don't want to depend on there being a good electrical connection at all times through this bracket. And even if I was to measure it with a meter and kind of confirm that there was good electrical continuity from this bracket to the trailer frame, it doesn't mean that it's going to stay as I'm going down the road and hitting bumps. And here's another area that I don't trust. These tail lights are mounted on these upright roller guide posts. And even if I have the tail light grounded really good to this upright post, I'm not sure that the upright post is grounded really good to the trailer frame. It's just been bolted over many layers of paint and I just don't want to trust that to be a good electrical connection. Okay, well let's go ahead and I'll show you how I dealt with some of those possible problem areas. So the bulk of the old wiring was just mounted to the outside of the trailer frame on this particular trailer. 
So in all the spots that it was just mounted to the outside of the trailer frame, I just took all the old wiring right off. Now on those upright posts that the taillights were mounted to, there was a small section of the wiring that was run up through the square tubing of the posts themselves. So I left the original wiring inside of that square tubing and I'm going to use that to pull in the new wiring when I get to that point. Then I took off all the old fixtures. Then I went ahead and I mounted the new taillights just in the same way that the old ones came off. I just bolted them right to the bracket. Now these taillights have a white wire. Okay, and we're going to address how I ground that white wire in a little bit here. But for now, I just bolted those tail lights onto the brackets. Now, if you remember, these side marker lights were mounted to these brackets that I really didn't trust to be grounded very well to the main trailer frame. So I'm going to bypass these brackets entirely, and I'm going to mount these side marker lights directly to the main frame of the trailer. Now, since there's no white wire on these side marker lights, I have to make sure that when I mount these side marker lights that I'm grounding them correctly. And these particular fixtures are meant to be mounted with two mounting screws on either side of them. One side actually has a metal tab on it and that metal tab needs to be electrically grounded to the trailer frame. So what I'm using is stainless steel self-starting screws and that's going to give me a good long-lasting electrical connection from that metal tab to the trailer frame. Now, once the fixtures were in place, it was time to start running the new wiring. Now, I was using one of those wiring harness kits where the plug and the wires are all complete, but the one thing that I did want to do was lengthen that white wire. Remember, I didn't want to ground that white wire right away on the trailer frame. I wanted to extend it and get it past that bolted together area on this particular trailer. And the way I extended that white wire is I just soldered another piece of white wire to it and heat shrinked over the connection point. Now it was time to mount the wires to the frame of the trailer. Now there's many ways that you can mount your wires to your trailer frame and I'll go through a few different examples in this video. I started off by mounting these sticky blocks that are actually made to accept zip ties for mounting wires. Okay, they just kind of got this peel and stick back to them. You can kind of put them anywhere. Now, I don't trust the peel and stick part of it for putting on a trailer frame. So I went ahead and I used some of those stainless steel self-starting screws to actually mount them to the trailer frame. And then I went along with the wire and attached the wire using those zip ties. And as you can see, I kind of bulked up the wire where it would be uh, underneath the zip ties to give it a, just a little bit more grip and a little bit more protection. And then as I ran the wiring past these jack wheel brackets, I added a little bit of rubber around the wires just to protect them even more. And I just kept mounting the wires in that fashion till I got past that bolted area on the trailer frame. And this is the part of the trailer frame that I want to ground that white wire to. So I ground away the paint with a stone wheel and a drill crimped on a ring connector and screwed it down with one of those stainless steel self-starting screws. And then to protect it from corrosion, I kind of painted over the whole thing with liquid electrical tape. You could also use regular paint. You just want to make sure that corrosion can't set in to this electrical connection. The good thing about using that liquid electrical tape is you can kind of gob it on in and around that crimp on connector and it provides a pretty good seal. Also, this is the point in this wiring job where the wires split up. The green and brown go to the right and the yellow and brown go to the left. Now, we need to connect the brown wire to these side marker lights. But remember, that brown wire needs to continue on past this side marker light and go all the way to the back to the tail light. Now there's many ways we can do this. We can use a three-way crimp connector. We can use a three-way pinch connector. But in this example, I just used a good old-fashioned wire nut. I broke into that brown wire, added in the wire from the side marker light, and wire nutted all three of them together. Then I gobbed on some of that liquid electrical tape to seal up that connection real good. 
Now from this point on back, I'm really only needing to mount two wires at a time. So on one side, I started using these little black wiring straps and I was continuing to fasten them with those stainless steel self-tapping screws. And as you can see, I would also bulk the wire up with a little bit of tape just to make that strap grip better and to protect the wires a little bit better. And then on the other side of the trailer, I was able to utilize some of the existing tabs to mount the wires. And again, I was bulking up the wires with a little bit of tape. Helps to bulk it up, protect it a little better, and those tabs grip on that uh, tape a lot better too. And you know, another good way to mount wires on a trailer frame is just good old fashioned duct tape. And I like to add a zip tie or two just to strengthen it up a little bit, just for good measure. I know it seems a little crude, but a good quality duct tape really makes for a pretty good fastener of wires to a trailer frame. Now that brings us to these upright roller brackets that I told you I really didn't trust to have a good electrical connection to the frame of the trailer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a short length of white wire and I'm going to run that right from the tail light fixture down that upright bracket and I'm going to ground it real good to the main part of the trailer frame. And I know that part of the trailer frame is grounded real well because you remember I extended that white wire to get all the way back to that main back part of the trailer frame. So if you remember, I left the old wiring inside that square tubing of that upright bracket and I'm going to use that to pull in the new wires. And I'm going to ground that white wire the same way I did on the other one. I'm going to grind away the paint, crimp on a ring connector, screw it down with a stainless steel self-starting screw, and cover it all up with liquid electrical tape. So now that I have the wires run, it's time to hook up the tail light fixtures. And again, at this point, it's pretty straightforward. White to white, brown to brown, yellow to yellow, green to green. Now, on this particular trailer, I'm going to connect these wires up using a crimp-on butt splice. But the cool thing about this particular butt splice is that the insulation around it is actually heat shrink. So I'm going to go ahead and crimp the wires together and then I'm going to heat up the connection and that insulation that's actually heat shrink shrinks down to the wire and makes a real good watertight seal. As you can see, I left several inches of extra wire at each one of these taillight fixtures. That's because if the owner ever damages these fixtures and they need to be replaced, you're going to have to cut out that butt splice that I put on there. And each time you cut out that butt splice, you're going to lose a little bit of length of your wiring. So we want to give ourselves several extra inches of wiring so we'll never have to worry about running out of the wire. And of course we don't want to leave these wires just flopping in the wind. We want to secure them down and again duct tape makes an excellent fastener. And of course the zip tie for good measure. Okay, well there's one example of a rewiring, refixturing job that I did on a boat trailer. Let's check out another boat trailer that I rewired and refixtured. Now one thing that's different about this trailer is that the original wiring is run inside of the trailer frame itself. So that's how we're going to run the new wiring too. 
So instead of just going through and tearing out all the old wiring, we want to bring in the new wiring as we're removing the old wiring, right? We want to kind of use the old wiring as like a pull string for the new wiring. Just like we did in that other boat trailer for that short length on that upright bracket. Now the map layout or the schematic of this boat trailer is going to be identical to the other one. We have our two side marker lights and we have our two tail lights. Now the tail lights on this particular trailer are mounted on brackets and these brackets are bolted to the trailer frame. Now on a lot of trailers I would look at that as kind of an iffy spot for electrical continuity. But because this trailer is fully galvanized and it's somewhat newer, I really do trust that these bolted on brackets do have a good electrical connection to the mainframe of the trailer. But even though this trailer is galvanized, there is one spot that I just don't trust to have good continuity through, and that's that tilt bed hinge point. I'm just afraid that as this trailer goes down the road, that this tilt bed hinge point can kind of rattle and shake and maybe kind of come in and out of good electrical continuity and that's oftentimes going to make your tail lights flicker. So what I did to kind of alleviate that is I just sort of ran a jumper from one side of that hinge point to the other to give myself a good electrical connection through that hinge point. And of course you got to give yourself enough slack so if you do tilt the bed of that trailer you don't break the wire loose. Now on these side marker lights, it's kind of the same thing. I don't really want to trust these brackets all that much, so I'm just going to mount these side marker lights right directly to the trailer frame. So with the side marker lights mounted directly to the trailer frame, with those brackets for the tail lights being good galvanized bolt-on brackets, I'm really comfortable with the electrical connection there. And with that jumper that goes around that hinge point on the tilt bed of this trailer, I feel real comfortable that I can go ahead and I can ground that white wire right up at the front of the trailer by the coupler and have good electrical continuity throughout the entire length of this trailer. Now on the side marker lights, it's going to kind of be the same thing. You're going to have to break into that brown wire on both sides and then have that brown wire continue on to those rear tail lights. Now on this particular trailer, I just went ahead and I used wire nuts to connect the wires. Okay, that's probably not as good as like the heat shrink butt splices we used in that first trailer. But using wire nuts and then sealing them up with electrical tape, that can give you an awfully good long lasting electrical connection too. Now, if I don't use liquid electrical tape to seal up the wire nut, it's always a good idea to put a little anti-oxidizing grease in the wire nut before you twist it on the wires. This will help seal up a good electrical connection. Then tape it up with some electrical tape to protect it even more. The good thing about using wire nuts is that if the fixture gets damaged, it can easily be unwired from the circuit without cutting back on the length of the trailer wires. Now on these tail lights, I need to do something with this white wire that comes out of the fixture, right? I need to ground that to the trailer frame. And remember, I'm pretty confident that this bolted on bracket is going to provide a good electrical connection to the main frame of the trailer. So I'm going to ground this white wire by putting it right on the mounting stud of this fixture itself. Now if this trailer was painted, I would want to scrape away all the paint from where this white wire is going to come in contact with the trailer frame. Because remember, we got to have a good electrical connection from this white wire to the trailer frame. And if you have to go through paint, sometimes you don't get that. But because this bracket is galvanized, I'm just going to add a little electrical grease, tighten this nut down good and tight, and I am really confident that I'm going to have a good electrical ground on this white wire. Now on this trailer, where the wires enter into the trailer frame itself, they were kind of loose and they were scraping against the trailer frame, and they actually kind of got worn down to where there was exposed conductors. So I don't want that to happen again. So I'm going to really beef up that area of the wiring harness. I'm going to wrap it up with some rubber, tape that up, 
and really protect those wires from rubbing up against the trailer frame. I'm also going to secure those wires with some zip ties so they're not wiggling around. Then there's a couple spots near the side marker lights that I want to bulk the wiring up with some tape. I don't want that trailer frame rubbing through the insulation of the wires there either. And then in the back by the tail lights, where they come out of the trailer frame is kind of an iffy spot too. So I want to bulk the wires up with some electrical tape there too. And then of course, secure them really good with some zip ties. Now over the years, I've been asked, why don't you just run white wires to all the individual light fixtures? Then you don't have to depend on the trailer continuity to complete the circuits. Well, one reason that they don't do that at the trailer factory is you would just have to run more white wires and you would have more connection points. But it would definitely work, and it would work especially good with fixtures that actually have a white wire. But with fixtures without a white wire, you'd still have to crimp on a ring connector and get a good clean connection to the stud or screws that you're using to mount the fixture. Now, if you did go ahead and run a white wire to all the separate fixtures, and these fixtures did have their own white wires, I would go ahead and I would still ground that white wire to the trailer frame also. That way, if you have any short circuits to trailer frame, you will still blow fuses, and that'll let you know that there's a problem in the wiring. Now, I know some of these things seem like they might be a bit overkill, the extending of white wires, the adding of white wires, the grinding down to bare metal, the using of stainless steel screws, the sealing up our connections, the protecting of wires, the securing of wires. Again, I know that some of this seems like a bit overkill, but doing all these things will make your new wires and your new fixtures work properly for many, many years to come. Well guys, there's a couple of examples of how you can rewire and refixture a trailer. There's a lot of different ways to fasten wires. There's a lot of different ways to terminate wires. But some of the stuff I showed you in this video has really worked pretty well for me over the years. Now, if you're interested in the troubleshooting aspect of trailer lights, I do have an entire playlist of trailer light videos, okay? And I'll also leave a link to that below in the description of this video. So if you wanna learn more about trailer lights, check that link out also. So I hope some of the stuff we went over today will help you guys out when you're rewiring or refixturing your trailer. All right. But anyways, guys, hey, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.